Coming from Massive Work Studio, whose previous game was a mobile rhythm game called Tap Hits, which allowed players to connect with their favorite celebrities, it was only natural for their next game to be a third-person action game with RPG elements and a Lovecraftian plot. Dolmen takes place in a sci-fi universe where humanity has colonized several star systems using space technology and genetic manipulation to adapt to its conditions. Its Souls-like gameplay system was set to provide an immense challenge to players and allows the ability to team up with up to three friends to conquer the unique bosses ahead of them. So will this game defy the odds and break through as a new hit single, or will it be doling out immense amounts of punishment which will lead me to buy a new controller? Let's find out. Welcome to Koshify. My name is Koshi, and this is Dolman. Now, if you want to see more reviews like this, remember to subscribe and we can grow the channel together. I'll be reviewing the PC version of this game and I got a code from the publisher, so thanks very much. Oh boy, this one's going to be tough, so let's get the good stuff out of the way first of all. Dolmen is a third-person action Souls-like game created using the Unreal 4 engine. After a catastrophic incident, the player is hired to bring crystals known only as Dolmen back to the archives of the human worlds. The main story kicker here is there is a faction that has showed up unannounced, kicked down the front door, and determined that they are superior. After doing so, they wipe out all of the weaker inhabitants of this planet as they do not live up to their standards. You are tasked with stopping this event and fighting your way through each boss and exploring the various locales on offer. Each of the environments have this dark and gruesome setting which matches the tone of the game. With dismantled corpses littered around the various areas, it really shows off the efforts of the previous people that have failed before you. There's also massive giant dead creatures blocking off areas whose bodies rival that of whales and other massive entities. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good things I can say about Dolmen, but I'd still like to give them a mention straight up. The weapons and armors are cool to look at when you're running around, and deciding on which one I wanted to craft was always a difficult decision. The music, while slightly generic, matched the feeling of each of the areas areas I was exploring and the sound design as a whole was pretty solid. There were times I was exploring a gross cave with all manner of slimy things on the wall and you could hear the gurgle or slurps of various elements of the worlds creeping me the hell out. Now getting into gameplay right from the get go and this was a struggle to get through. From individual prompts that stopped gameplay for each individual thing you can do, elements that for a tutorial level appear to be way over tuned and its linear design pushes you down a singular path. You would think someone being introduced to a game for the first time would need time to learn the controls and deal with the first piddly little enemies before tackling the bigger challenges on offer. In other games of this genre, the first hour would be to learn the mechanics and the world around you. Dolman has other ideas though and wants you to slap you into the middle of tanky enemies, ambushes are plenty, and too many buttons to press to do the things that you want to do. Now that's not a terrible thing to start with, but you also need these abilities to flow together well, and instead the various systems seem to be about as responsive as Australia's national internet infrastructure. The mix of melee and ranged combat together sounds like it would work really well, and it does, theoretically. You can dash in, get a hit or two on an enemy, and then while you're recovering your stamina, you can pepper them with your range attacks while they continue to approach. Once you're out of energy, it recharges if you're using your light attack, and you can get back to bonking. It gives this feeling that you need to be aware of your resources constantly, and with the added challenge it makes even more rewarding when you overcome a difficult encounter. The problem here is the systems don't work well as a cohesive experience. And the worst offender of all of this is the energy system. You have three bars of resources to manage at any one time, with the status bar rounding out this quadrant lateral of fuckery. Health, stamina, and energy appear to interact with many of the game's mechanics, and your eyes will always be drawn to that top left-hand corner of the screen most of the time. You need to use energy to fire your ranged weapon, and this will recharge slowly over time. This pool is also used to heal yourself, so if you don't have any energy left over after you've shot things, good luck surviving more than one or two hits. To recharge energy, you are given another resource by the way of energy canisters, which is the game's apparent equivalent of Estus, except they don't heal you. Instead, it gives you the ability to heal. You get a set amount of these every time you rest at a sync point, and this will also respawn the world's enemies around you. To activate this resource, it takes about an eternity and can only really be used either outside of combat or when one of the bosses does a massive wind of attack that you can actually dodge. Whoever implemented this system needs to be taken out back and forced to play this game without any thumbs. The amount of times that I would be in the middle of a boss fight only to realize I not just had to press a button to heal, but also to press a button, wait two seconds, and then get the ability to heal was infuriating. While this may be the only comparison to Elden Ring I'll make in this video, it solved this resource balance issue by having two different options for potions, one filling health and other with your focus. 
Even thematically for Dolman's World, it makes sense to have separate resource fillers as you're wearing a cyborg suit type of armor and now you could work independently to fix different systems. But no, instead when you run out of energy you run around hoping you don't get hit because if you do you have to refill your energy, then heal, and then refill your energy again because now you're back in the same spot where you were with no energy. When starting out one energy canister doesn't even completely refill your energy bar either which makes no sense. There's also no way to upgrade this resource in any way, so good luck with the small pool of resources that you have available. Once you reach a bonfire styled sink station, you have the ability to teleport back to your hub ship or any other sink station you have visited previously. This allows you to bounce back and forth between areas quickly, which definitely helps with the exploration of the various areas. In your hub ship, you can level up your various stats, craft uniquely styled weapons, and change your customization options. Crafting weapons requires specific materials that are found randomly around the world or acquired from the various bosses on offer. When the materials drop they have different colours that create a sort of rarity tiered system that can be located in plain sight, within destructible objects, or drop from the various enemies that litter each area. These will be used for various crafting options and boost to the items that you create. None of your equipable items will be found along your travels, they are entirely craftable so you won't have that questioning moment when finding a random piece of gear to see if it will be better for your character. There are various weapons and builds on offer which range from big bonk sticks in the form of great swords and hammers to things like one-handed and shield combos to choose from. You also have the option for a variety of ranged weaponry in the form of pistols, shotguns and rifles that will help you balance out the various effects you want to put on your enemy. Most of these items have a stat requirement as well so hopefully you have specced up enough to be able to wield them. Unfortunately you don't have the option to upgrade your weapons once they've been crafted. You pick from your options, slap on some bonuses and then if you get better materials later you just have to remake the weapon. Luckily this isn't the same for the armor and you have three tiers of upgrades that increase in defenses as you go. With these upgrades come additional stat requirements that may not be known to you when you craft the first tier of item. If you decide to make the tier upgrade without checking these new requirements you'll be shit out of luck and have to make another item from scratch or farm until your required stat is high enough. But to even know these options are available to you you need to navigate the poorly designed UI that has been created for this game. The UI is a real pain in the ass and it continued to give me grief throughout my playthrough. I should mention that the gameplay UI does work quite well. It's it's simple and unobtrusive which allows you to focus on the gameplay and the enemies around you. Where it falls down somewhat is with, well, basically everywhere else. The crafting menus are so simplistic and hard to determine what you're selecting at times it gave me a headache. It took me almost an hour to realize that I could craft armor instead of just the weapons that I had available. The game recommends that you play with a controller and doing so makes this game a nightmare to navigate its menus. The level and stat information pages also provide no useful information to you. You would think that your starting gear with its 200 plus resistances would be enough to handle the basic levels of enemies being thrown your way. Unfortunately this translates to essentially wearing tissue paper and going up against all manner of things that will tear it to shreds. Once you do have the armor you need to tackle the next challenge it becomes almost useless as the next enemies will tear you a new one just as quickly. Because I haven't complained about this game enough, the most frustrating thing that almost had me buying a new controller was the fact that you buffer any action until it's ready to perform. When you slam your greatsword down, you want to be able to get out of there as quickly as possible. So when you dodge, you're expecting to move out of harm's way. Unfortunately, the game has other ideas. Your dodge is now put into a queue of actions which will be input when your current action is finished animating. This shit got me killed on multiple occasions and it made the sluggish combat even slower because I had to press an input, wait for the animation to finish and then press the next one. If I didn't, I would hit something twice instead of once and then be hit back even though I was mashing the dodge button. Once I'd been smacked by the revenging bastard, the dodge went off. This happened on multiple occasions which left me contemplating just who played this game before it was completely released to the public apart from me. To add to this, some animations are way longer than expected and this was especially true for attacks. It feels like they are currently designed with a flow of actions in mind and that flow is attack then attack and then attack. It's almost like the end of the animation has a setup to follow up with your second attack but you instead want to get the hell out of there and straight into Dodge City. This wouldn't be as much of a problem if the combat was quick and you had this get in get out mechanic playstyle in mind but it feels like the opposite. This felt especially apparent when playing the slower builds like Greatsword and Hammer. These weapons allow you to do a lot of extra damage in one hit but because of their speed it does allow you to be opened up to take a lot of extra damage. This is the way I started playing the game but the typical big bonk stick strategy doesn't seem to work well here. To add to the animation woes, if you do a big jumping wind up attack it's almost like you enter this slow motion animation to feel the power of the hit. Unfortunately the enemies don't have this prompt in their script and they just as fast as normal which leads you to mostly doing this move accidentally and being punished for it. As I'll go through later I've replayed this game from the start with a different build in mind and it was definitely much better to get in and get out mechanic of the dual claws which seems to be what the game may have been designed for. 
If every weapon in the game was like this, it would make things a lot easier, but you've got these massive swords in the game and they're craftable from the get-go, so you would think that they are viable options. They are not. To make this even more frustrating, the enemy AI for the most part is pretty broken. Multiple enemies will just stand there being peppered by gunfire without moving a muscle, and others will notice you from across an entire football field. Some of the ranged enemies will disengage from you briefly, which will then make you lose your lock on for some reason, and then they'll turn around and shoot you immediately. I can just imagine the enemy laughing when this happened with a subtle gotcha bitch to cap it all off, which made it incredibly frustrating to play. If this broken system got me killed, I would then have to run back through the level and then get back to my body to recover my hoarded nanites. After a few of these deaths, it dawned on me very quickly that these areas are very linear. Sure, there may be small op tracks that may have a crafting material sitting there, but it all draws you back to the main path to follow. This allows the devs to set up various ambushes that are not usually telegraphed in the slightest. If you're not constantly prepared or looking up ahead, you have an enemy literally pop out of thin air and already in their attack animation, ready to carve you a new tentacle hole. The terrain also seems to be pretty janky, which made navigation extremely tedious. From not being able to move through sizable gaps to getting stuck on various elements, Dolmen lacks any form of consistency in its level design. There are multiple times where I got stuck on basic structures and I had to either wiggle myself free or run up things at a weird side angle or be doomed to suffer. This happened in boss fights as well, which led to this panic spamming of everything just so I could get free again. Speaking of, the boss fights appear to be a mix of biological horrors and humanoid style enemies with a decent variety between the two. The first boss is a big Starship Troopers style bug that spawns smaller bugs as ads. The second one was a two-stage humanoid encounter with super cheesable mechanics, and the third, the one that you see in the big original cutscene, was a big tentacled monstrosity with plenty of attacks. Now I know what you're thinking. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going, and that's basically how each of these fights went when you weren't standing there doing nothing. You run face first into a room, get a big cutscene and a big boss health bar to show that this is a boss fight. The first big wall was encountered with the third boss where the mechanics changed twice as you continue to fight through its health. You learn the mechanics by face tanking them and nothing you have done previously will teach you how to deal with them. This third boss also had a massively uneventful run back and it really gives you a long time to contemplate which mechanic you're going to die to next and the frustration only builds from there. The first phase of this boss is extremely boring and drawn out. After cutting the first weight of tentacles down, it slaps the ground and you just move to an area and wait. Then it slaps the ground again and it chases you with some protruding tentacles and it felt like I was playing a game of snake as I tried not to enter an area that I ran past before with tentacles in it. Then it slaps the ground again and you move to another area and wait. At no point during this phase can you do any meaningful damage to the boss, so I just stood there contemplating the better things I could be spending my time on, like watching paint dry. As a comparison, the last phase gives you no space to move and no time to recharge your energy because it does the same quick bite attack over and over and over again. This was meant to be the big bad of the area and it ended up being an annoying wall that took way too long to break down. Once this drawn out process was complete, you go through a cutscene and then you would expect to have the option to teleport back or continue to explore. Well again, the game has other ideas here. Instead, you're pushed to the next area without the option of spending your resources or anything. While you do get your spent energy cores back for some reason, there's a new linear level to explore and more enemies to learn before you can go back to rest and spend your resources. On your travels, you may eventually find random NPCs, which are both randomly placed around the world and will spell a single line of dialogue before giving you an item and then becoming non-interactable. Why are they standing there when everything else is going on around us? No idea. Are they going to leave now because you are here to rescue them? Nope, they're just going to stand there T-posing and staring into the dark abyss of their souls that constantly occupied fucks. During my time with the game, there was also an AI styled character which spout lines of dialogue about an area around you or when a particular concentration of dolmen had been detected. Your character will spout off a couple of lines or questions or one liners before proceeding, but it doesn't necessarily do anything to progress the story. Complementing this are various panels and random terminals spread around the area which will give minimal information as to what might be going on in the various locales. For the most part, these are useless pieces of exposition, but they may create a better image of the world as you play. After progressing through the multitude of bosses, I I hit the inevitable difficulty wall. At this point, I was about two thirds of the way through the game. I farmed up my upgraded armor, redid bosses so I had the best weapon I could get, and I still couldn't beat the stubborn bastard. After bashing my head against the wall for about an hour, and there's no other way to turn, I thought maybe this was the wrong build and I needed to learn from my mistakes in a second playthrough. Yes, I played through this game twice. I restarted the game and instead of using the standard big bonk stick, I went for a quick and nimble dual claw weapon build. This made my playthrough much easier. Since I already knew what to look out for this time around, each boss fell before me in my almighty dual claws of destruction. This time I was actually having a little fun pushing each of the areas and punching everyone in my path. 
Then I came up against the same wall again. No matter how many times I tried with two different playthroughs, I couldn't beat it. With a combination of terrible hitboxes from their attacks, overtuned health pool, and lack of any time to breathe with a sheer amount of bullshit clogging my nostrils, this was a challenge that I could ultimately not overcome. It was at this point when I decided that I was done. From the linear levels to the lack of world that I cared for, randomly placed NPCs spouting the same single line of dialogue, buffering attack animations that left me overly vulnerable, a lack of character progression, an overall lack of polish, I had basically just about had enough. Dolmen is a game that should have been released to early access at best and remade completely at its worst. With so many other options available to you at the moment in this genre, I can't recommend you pick up Dolmen. Maybe wait for a few patches to iron out the major issues, but even then, it's an experience that left me both just frustrated and confused as to why it was made at all. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you thought of Dolmen down below and maybe we can rage at it together. Remember to give the video a like as well, it goes a long way, and subscribe for more reviews like this. Until next time, Kashi, out.